Okay, enough about that. Let's go to James chapter four. I did so much talking, I didn't turn there myself. And we're gonna start, we're gonna start off with an absolutely brutal passage. So I this is not supposed to be some kind of like hidden rebuke or anything. It's gonna be a really strong passage. I'm not gonna go after the hard stuff here, but there's a point in here that I want to make. Okay. So <laughs> first midweek of the year, we're gonna start it in verse four with the words, you adulterous people. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, chapter four, verse four. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity towards God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And here's the verse I want to really focus on. Come near to God and he will come near to you. And we'll stop. We'll stop right there. So in this passage, what's going on is there's a lot of fighting, a lot of infighting in the church. We wouldn't ever have that in our church. So we don't need to worry about that. No, I'm only kidding. It happens. Hey, we're people, right? You know what I mean? We get on each other's nerves. We, um, you know, we we, we're sinners. We, we, We mess up. They're messing up. That's what was happening. But there was clearly some type of issue that was going on within the church because they were really starting to fight and quarrel with each other. And, and, um, you know, in verse one, what causes these fights and these quarrels among you? There was a lot of infighting going on in that particular church, and that was being addressed by James. But as he says this, he kind of goes and gives a bit of a solution on how to get rid of this stuff. And his solution is you got to get rid of the worldliness. You guys are being, you know, and he's telling them, you guys are just being worldly. You're acting like men and women of the world. You're fighting like that. And it's not a good situation. Um, they were bickering. They were fighting. And and in this, you know, that's kind of what the world does. And I just think about our world today. There is so much fighting going on. Oh, my goodness. Um, the toxicity of news programs and social media and this and that. It's just pride is just shooting out of everyone's Facebook feeds. Everyone has the answer. Everybody knows who all the bad people, it's just, it's rough out there. Um, It's just, that's, you know, that's the world, right? Um, But again, in this discourse, what he's he's saying here is you guys are like plugged into the world. And since you're plugged into the world, you're acting worldly. And because you're acting worldly, you're getting all of these fights and all these different things that are happening. And so what does he do? He says, he, 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 he mixes in there, listen, you got to be spiritual. And specifically, he's got this great line where he says, listen, come near to God and God will come near to you. Draw near to God. Some uh, versions say, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And the reality is, is whatever it is that we're drawing ourselves near to, that sort of becomes who we are and our essence and all of those sort of things. Does that make sense? Wherever you're kind of drawing from, that's kind of what fills you up and what you're full of. And there you go, because you're drawing from those things. On Sunday, we're likely going to talk about Psalm 1 and just how we need to be drawing those waters out from God. That's who we need to be. And so my question for you here this morning is, what are you drawing near to? What are you kind of plugged into? What's feeding your soul? What's feeding your essence? What's what's kind of coming into you? Because if it's just stuff about the world, well, then we're going to likely be worldly. And I want to be careful with saying some of this stuff. But, you know, I just think about news programming today and political radio and, and, oh, my goodness, like, I'm not big into that. I do my little Today Show in the morning. I like the boom, boom, boom. I think I said that last week. Uh, and that's about it. I, I don't really do, do too much. I maybe do about 20 minutes of that. And we're good. You know, I, I'm not into all that. But that stuff, you can see it. And you've seen it over the years how when we're drawing that into us. And I'm not saying don't watch news, right? You know what I'm saying. 
But but when we are drawn into those things and we're listening and we're just filling ourselves up with political discourse and all this sort of stuff, it usually doesn't turn out very well for us. It usually gets us to, in lots of conflicts. And I know better and arrogance and pride and all of those sort of things. Why? Because we're drawing it in from the world. And well, what's going to come out? If that's what you're drawing in, well, that's the stuff that is important to you and it's going to come out. Um, hey, here's me. I'm Cleveland Browns guy, right? Been a rough couple of weeks here. Ooh, last three weeks been rough. But I mean, it's true of me. You guys know me. I love my sports radio shows and all this sort of stuff. Well, I draw that stuff in. I like the little podcasts. I like knowing what I'm not. I draw that stuff in. I draw it in. I draw it in. So here we are on Christmas. My parents are in town. It is Christmas of all things. Last time I checked, I'm a minister. Ministers and Christmas should go good together, right? They should go good together. But here's Ryan. And I'm watching, uh, I'm watching on Christmas Day, uh, the Browns and the Packers. And Baker Mayfield throws that, that first interception. You guys, you brothers know what I'm talking about. He launches that ball up and it goes to the 50 yard line and there's just a Packer waiting for it and he catches it and I'm mad. I'm just mad. And my mom says in classic barb painter fashion, but it was such a beautiful throw. That's just, that's my mom. One time I hit a golf ball in through the middle of a lake and she said, beautiful shot, Ryan. It's just who she is, right? She's just super positive. And I turned to her and I snapped. I was like, mom, it's a horrible throw. They threw it right to the other team. I, I snapped and I, I hurt her feelings. And she walked by and she whispered to me, um, I, I forget exactly what the words were, but like, um, I'm not just like one of the guys here. I'm your mother. And I was like, oh gosh, why? Like, I just, I, don't, I like too much of this stupid sports in, you know what I mean? I get too passionate over the most meaningless things, but this is what happens, right? Whatever it is that you're drawing in, you become super passionate about. And whatever it is you're passionate about, I mean, that's going to come out of you and your essence and who you are. This is what was happening in James 4. They're just being worldly and they're getting in fights with each other. And, you know, there you go. Um, I, I mentioned social media. It's got so toxic and negative and victim hunting and all of this sort of stuff. Guys, like, what is it? that we're drawing near to? What is it that we're drawing into our lives, into our ears, into our eyes, into our hearts, into our souls, into who we are? Is it all this outside stuff or is it God's word, God's presence, even God's creation, the goodness of God? Is that what we're really drawing? And so James says, listen, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. And in 2022, our whole theme, really, really simple, we're going to be drawing near to God. Uh, if you haven't, um, it, well, you haven't yet because it just went up tonight. But uh, Sunday sermon is up. And if you weren't there on the Zoom, I really ask you to go to the YouTube page and just watch it. It's maybe 20, 25 minutes long. Uh, but just to, just so you're kind of on board with uh, all the different things that we're doing. And did a lesson at John chapter 15 about remaining in the vine. And how everything and all the fruit of our lives comes from really being in the vine. And, if that, and, and so our 2022 theme is called The Vine Life. Yeah, there you go. And no, we're not drinking wine all the time. The Vine Life. It's not that kind of vine. Amen. Um, and so that's what it's going to be all about. And, and it's really simple. I just want us to draw near to God. I just want us to remain in the vine. I was thinking about this word remain, and, and I, I heard this this week, and I thought, oh, this would have been perfect for Sunday. But, it, you know, uh, somebody said there's a reason we're called human beings and not human doings. <laughs> you know, I think so many of us, we're wired to be human doings, right? We get all of our value from what we do, and it, we're not doing something. Guys, we're human beings. We just need to be with the Lord. We need to be with Jesus. And from that, a lot of great fruit comes. And so, like I said, I am super excited uh, about this year. I really am. Um, and here we go. So I'm going to just share with you. We'll put up this slide again real quick. And then I want to talk uh, through with you a little more depth of some of the things that we're going to be doing from beginning. There we go. So in January, if you haven't yet, 
Well, let me just go through them real quick. In January, we're going to be doing prayer journals. February is going to be all about fasting. March is about the memorization of scripture. April is going to be practicing God's presence. More on that in a second. May is going to be about meditation. June is going to be solitude and, uh, and silence and Sabbath. July, as I move my little camera over, boop, July is uh, going to be about gratitude. August is going to be scribing. We're going to write out the Bible together. It's going to be kind of fun. September is going to be all about simplicity. October, we're going to be writing out our own psalms, uh, writing our own psalms to God. November is going to be about serving, and December is going to be about singing. And so let me close this, and I want to kind of talk through each of the months with you guys. Boop, there we go. Okay, so January. Pull them out if you got them with you. Here's Ryan's prayer journal. Just got this bad boy going. Hey, there's my 2022 prayer journal. So in January, pretty simple. I mean, not a lot to explain on this one, uh, but we want everyone to go out and get yourself a journal, whether that's a little 79 cent you know, dollar store. I guess there wouldn't be 79 cents at the dollar store, but you know what I mean. Maybe you want to be like Rusty and get one of those lamb goat skin $40 ones. Uh, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. But go out and get yourself a nice little journal. And what we want you to do, again, this is what we're going to be doing this year is practicing the spiritual disciplines. Okay? There's a reason they're called spiritual disciplines. And there's a reason we don't have a great, we don't love the word discipline, right? The nature of this is we're going to try to draw near to God in 12 different ways that might be very, very new to you. We want all of you to try it and to just do it for a month. You might hate it. You might love it. You might start off by hating it and end up loving it. Um, I, but some of these are going to be for you and they're going to be new and they're going to be different. You're going to go, wow, I learned a lot through that. So in January, we just want you to write out your prayers. And, uh, you know, my first kind of observation from writing out prayers is it makes me have to be a lot more intentional, intentional about what it is that I want to say. My hand hurt the first day. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't keep up. I was trying to write so fast and I was gripping the pen. I'm like, OK, this, I got to slow down here a little bit. But it actually made me kind of like stop and think, what is it that I want to write about today? Anyway, it, it was fun. It was my quick little observation. Uh, but. A lot of these, what you'll notice is there's an element of slowing down in the spiritual disciplines that's actually going to be really, really good for us. So January journaling, when everybody just gets shelf prayer journal, write them out. You might love it, might hate it, just do it anyway. Um, and let's be unified on it. And there you go. February is going to be all about fasting. And, you know, we're you know, this is, fasting isn't something we talk about probably as much as we should. Uh, and I do think there's a, a bit of an, a mystical element to it where we don't quite understand it and all that. And I always point to, to Matthew chapter nine, verse 15, because it's very interesting that Jesus' disciples were noted for <laughs> shortest month of the year. Yeah, good point. I actually did it because they both start with F, Corey, but there you go. Fasting February. But yeah, that kind of helps, too. Um, but the, Jesus' disciples didn't fast. Isn't that wild? I mean, that's, that's recorded, is that the, the Pharisees were noticing that. They're like, they're getting an attitude like, why won't your disciples fast? Which is, I think, a legitimate question. And Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. We're going to really dive into that particular scripture. but. There's a lot in there about mourning, but the overall idea is just like they don't have to fast because they're with me right now. When I'm gone, then they're going to fast. There's an element to fasting where it really draws you in near to God. Yeah, um, and so we're going to talk all about that. Um, I haven't drawn up all the different plans, but the, I think the idea for that one will be we'll just take once a week and we're going to fast once a week. Just maybe it's maybe it's your Monday, maybe it's your Tuesday. We're gonna ask everybody to fast once a week. I know you're freaking out already, but that's okay. Um, and amen. You know, we'll get in all that. I realize if you're pregnant, and the, amen. We, we these aren't hard and fast rules. We're just you. You see what we're trying to do here. 
But we, but again, with the vine life, what, what we're trying to do is draw our nourishment from God, right? Like it's all about that vine. Jesus says things like, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We're just attaching ourselves more and more to the vine. In March, March is going to be about memorization. That might be another one that freaks you out. We actually did this one month in Toledo, and it was awesome. Some people really didn't like it, and they just were intimidated by it. And I don't know. We're not doing this. There's no show off here. There's no, like, test at the end of this. This is here for you. So please don't get overwhelmed by any of these sort of things. Maybe you'll memorize three sentences. Fine. Whatever. Others might memorize three books or chapters or whatever. Cool. Whatever it is, uh, we're going to do that. And at the end, kind of have a big celebration of anybody who wants to get up and share those sort of things. But what's the intent? Again, it's the vine, right? The idea is we are going to get scripture into us. To memorize something means you got to look at that thing a lot. You're getting the scripture, you're getting the word. Jesus is the word. Get that word into you. So it's just another spiritual discipline that we're going to try and just get more scriptures to be a part of us. And then, amen, hopefully those scriptures will come out of us. In April, I'm very excited about April. I just put the word presence. What we want to do is we want to talk a lot about walking with God. Um, there's a lot in there. Uh, the American vernacular is our personal relationship with God. Scripture would call it your walk with God. And um, we're going to start our days with God. We're going to end our days with God. We're going to set alarms on our phones and they're going to go off and they're going to be reminders. You need to pray right now. And they're not going to be like half hour prayers, just a couple sentences. And we're going to be reminded all throughout the day. It's almost like we got to, hey, you got to take the Lord with you, right? We'll probably sing that once or twice. But we're going to, I want Jesus to walk with me. I'm thinking of all kinds of songs. Be with me, Lord. There's a lot of good songs we sing about this. We're going to try to put that into practice where everywhere we go, we're just going to be praying and just constant contact as if Jesus is right by our side. Um, Try to get rid of maybe some of the radio, maybe get some Christian stuff, get some gospel music, but just try to surround yourself with God all day. That should be, I think it will be a very encouraging month. May is about meditation. Now, again, there's this whole new world of Christian meditation. I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see how that goes. There's Christian meditations that are out there. I got to honestly, I got to look into this a little bit more. This is not my strong suit. Um, but one idea just for, for Jewish people, again, like, my goodness, I got I probably have 10 different Bibles sitting in this room right here. And I got my phone here and I got my computer and I got that. We have Bible everywhere. They had kind of Bible very limited places. And so meditation on scripture. A lot of Psalms about, I will meditate on your word. A lot of Psalms on these sort of things. And if you don't have a Bible, whatever it is that you studied that particular week, or, you know, we're at synagogue, that might be your quiet time for the next seven days, if you want to call it that. And so they they would meditate. And so you take something like Psalm 23. And meditation, uh, uh, one form of meditation is simply saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. And saying it over and over and over again, putting emphasis on different words. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The more you do that, the more your brain starts to kind of, again, you're getting that word into you in just a different way. So that might sound a little bit weird, maybe, and that's fine. It's okay. We're just going to try these things. We're getting the word in us. We're getting Jesus. We're attaching ourselves to the vine. June, I think, is going to be glorious. June, we're going to talk about solitude, silence, and Sabbath. Now, be very clear about this. Sabbath is not a New Testament command. I really believe that. There's a, a lot of people believe that it is a New Testament command. I do not. I feel like I've done a pretty good study on this. Um, but the concept and the principle of Sabbath is very, very biblical. They need to stop. They need to slow down. They need to take some extended time with God. And so we're going to be asking everyone once a week, get yourself alone with God and just go be with God. Might feel a little bit weird to some of us, 
slowing down. You know, I'm, I've, I mean, we did something similar to this one time in Toledo. It was like, just go to spend some special time with God. I put myself in a kayak and just went out in the middle of a lake and just chilled out there for a few hours and prayed and sang and what just different. It's we're going to slow down and just be with God in June. I'm pretty excited about that one. You might want to go hike a mountain. You might want to go sit in the woods. Just go be alone, whatever it is where you want to go. And we said that for June. So you don't have to wear your galoshes. All right. July is all about gratitude. Um, this one's a little less on the personal connection, uh, spiritual discipline. This one's more of an outward one. And that's okay. We sprinkled a few of those in. Um, but we are going to have actually got some ideas to be able to use the church building for this. But build a massive gratitude list within that church building. We'll, we'll talk. We'll, <laughs> I got ideas on that one. But one of the things that, that, uh, that I want to encourage everyone to do during that month is to count, yeah, count them out too. Everyone gives 25 positive compliments a day. You just get yourself in the habit of thanking people, telling people they look nice, being gracious, these sort of things. Go be a light. So again, that one's maybe a little less on the connection with us and God and more of us and people, but that's okay. Um, oh, I guess we're going to write out scripture. Um, not sure how we're going to do it. Part of me wants to divvy up the whole Bible and have us as a congregation write the whole Bible. I don't know if that's doable. I don't even know if that's good. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But again, the concept, you've heard this before, right? Like study habits. When you write something down, you're I'm going to make this up, but 90% more likely to retain that information. I don't know if it's 90. I don't know what the number is, but you know what I'm talking about. When you take the time to actually write something down, the chance of you remembering it is a lot more. And uh, I'm new to this practice. I've never done it, but I hear good things. We're going to pick out some script. We're going to write out scripture. That's what we're going to do in the morning. We're just going to write, write out the Bible. Look at it, write it. Look at it, write it. And uh, we're going to do some sermons on being scribes or something. There's scribes in the Bible. There you go. September, we're going to kind of come back and uh, slow down again. And it's all about simplicity. Uh, there's a great book. And I want to show it to you. Do, 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 do. There we go. There's a book that my friend Joel Nagel wrote. Joel's the man. And it says, How to Be a Missionary in Your Hometown. And it, this is not a book about evangelism. This is not, oh, be a missionary, everyone go share your faith. Da, 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 da. It's not about that. It's rather... It's about living like a missionary, like an like a third world missionary while being in the United States. Um, I want to actually talk to Indonesia and maybe get some different meals for us to 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 prepare at our homes. And I want to kind of have an Indonesian theme to this sort of stuff. But we're going to try to slow down, spend a lot. We're going to spend less and spend more. We're going to spend a lot less money by going out and doing our American shopping sprees. But we, so less spending there, but more spending time with our families, spending time talking together, praying together, all that sort of stuff. And uh, we're going to, we're going to be a missionary. I hear nothing but good things about this book. So we're going to go through this book together and have a little bit of fun. So there you go. Next. Ah, hold on. There we go. So that's September. Um, oh, in the end of September, we're going to take our special missions collection, just kind of tying it all together, right? Like it would just be the perfect time to take up our special missions. So we'll do that in September. In October, uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to back to the Psalms. We're going to be reading Psalms, but writing our own Psalms to God. Psalms are just poetry. I'm not a poet kind of guy. Not my thing. We're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, November is going to be again, more of a outward focused one, but it's going to be all about serving, uh, serving other people. Um, I want to read to you in Luke chapter 14, there's a few churches that have done something similar to this, uh, but we are set for success into pulling this off, but this will require our kitchen be here. <laughs> this is dependent upon whether or not our building, uh, basement will be ready. I believe that it will be. Uh, but let me just read to you something in Luke chapter 14. It's a very convicting passage. But it says here in verse 15. 
When one of those ta- uh, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, "Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God." Jesus replied, "A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At that time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, "Come, for everything is now ready." But they all like began to make excuses. The first said, "I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me." bad move. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just uh, bought five yoke of, oh, I just read that one. Um, (laughs) Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. (laughs) There's a lot of of intensity going on here, but you see Jesus' heart for the, uh, the underserved and the underprivileged, if you will. And he talks about, we got to fill this house and we got to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to treat people like Kings and Queens. The idea, and this will take a lot of work and we'll need a lot of your help for it. The idea is, I mean, God has put us in the perfect spot to really be able to live this parable out. And so in November, we, at some point, probably a little bit before Thanksgiving, we're going to live this parable out. We're going to go find people that need a meal. We're going to we go find people that need clothes. We're going to go find people that need, uh, that are just in need. Um, and we so are, that's our year. That's what we want to do. Guys, it's all about drawing near to God. It's all about the vine life. It's all about, you know, again, Jesus says, um, yeah, in me, you will bear much fruit. Outside of me, you can do nothing. <laughs> so amen. We want to be in the vine and it's going to be great.